Hey, welcome to Energy Update with Tina and Jeremy. Hi, Jeremy. Hey, Tina. How are you doing? Hey, good. It's, it's, I was going to say it's May. It's been in my mind that it's May. And I really have to like count and go, no, it's, where are we at? Oh, yeah. Doug's birthday's passed. It, July 4th is coming. We're going into July, people. Yeah. Welcome in. <laughs> We're halfway through the year. Can you believe that? Oh, we are. That's true. It's kind of flying by. It is flying by, but I'm sure if we all looked back, we could see that we've accomplished a lot or been through a lot. Yeah. Or, yeah. So, yeah, somebody said like we're halfway to Christmas the other yeah. day. Oh, my like, God. Dang, yeah. Don't even. <sighs> oh, don't I was at the store the other day and they had winter clothes. And I was like, I can't even. Yeah. Winter, it's 100 degrees out. They're already putting Halloween stuff out. Like, oh, my goodness. It's the 4th of July. <laughs> like, can we just be in the summertime, please? Yeah. Don't let's stay the in the moment, away. people. Please. Yeah. yeah, let's stay in the moment. So speaking of the moment, we are entering into a yin metal sheep month, and we're going to get yes. into the Western stuff, too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Tina doesn't want to because she's choking, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I couldn't find the mute button and I was panicking. I almost ended the call. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is this going to be the yin metal sheep month? Yeah. Is this is this it? Is this like what it's going to be where there's this bit of panic or things aren't quite playing out? Well, okay, so the, here's an image that I'm getting for this month's sheep. It's kind of funny because... I'm interested because I, I got one this morning too. So for years and years, I've been in therapy and one of the, I've done parts therapy for a long time and your parts are the different parts of you that are inside your brain. And one of, I have this part of me that's called the fainting goat. Have you ever seen those fainting goats where you go, bah, and they, they go, and they kind of fall over because they're completely just petrified with fear. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of image I'm getting this month for this sheep because they get a little spooked right they get a little mm -hmm. anxious yeah what was the do. image you got mm -hmm. sorry i need to take another drink yeah so and and i love it i love that image because it makes me have a lot of compassion for the the sheep the sheep or the goat because yeah, it's kind actually, of a yeah go ahead well it's Please. kind of a it's kind of a, a duality kind of a, an energy mm -hmm. because you've got the, the, you know, determined goat that wants to climb the mountain, but then you've got this sheep that wants to build up its, you know, its thick coat so that it's not so freaked out by everything. Mm. Oh, I love that visual. Years ago, my daughter took a, some, an animal science class in the charter school she was going to in the, the teacher who was, you know, just, like so well versed and experienced. And she said that goats have a suicide switch, that they have a, a chemical in their brain that if they get too stressed out, it will release that chemical and they'll go out. They'll be dead. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't either until that. I was like, wow, that's kind of that. Like you're, you're saying freeze. This is too much. I can't, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. And mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons is because the goat and the sheep is a herd animal and it wants mm -hmm. just to be told. It, it wants to feel safe. It wants to go, oh, we're moving. Okay, I'm going too. <clears throat> and so it's like if it's if it's not seeing an answer, it's not seeing mm -hmm. a direction. Yeah. I don't know what to do, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna freeze. The it, visual yeah. I got because it's a yin metal. So I was trying to think of what yin metal is to me. Yin metal is to me, it's like um, getting your work done, baking cookies, but then cleaning up the mess, right? Getting mm -hmm. everything back in order. And the visual was, I'm trying to get everything back in order, but all of these sheep and goats were bumping into me and just messing things back up. They're like tracking the flower across the floor. And I'm, I can't quite get where I want to be with the organization because yeah. it's yin metal. And yin yeah. metal is, it's got some, it's very utilitarian to me. It's like the tools that you would use to bake cookies. 
yeah. or to, you know, clean up your garage or organize the tool bench, your desk, mm-hmm. um, all of this stuff that you have around you is utilitarian and it's, um, it helps us manage life better. Yeah. But then you've got this bumping into each other, getting in each other's way of the sheep energy. That's the visual. I, that. I, have. I love that visual that oh, I love that visual. Now, I think it's important to bring up also that the the um, the sheep or the goat is a yin metal, or excuse me, a yin earth animal. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. natural energy is earth. It's very grounded. But the visual I always get for the, the yin earth is like going to the beach and playing in the sand. You can pick up the sand and watch it fall through your fingers. So yeah. this month with that yin metal... Metal is the energy that knows how to move earth. So it's kind of like the image I get of that is like picking up a metal shovel and scooping the sand mm-hmm. into a bucket and creating mm-hmm. like a, a sand castle. So we do have the capability to get a lot of things done this, this month mm-hmm. if we remain focused. And we it's like we almost have to calm down the little sheep within to say, hey, everything's mm-hmm. going to be okay. We're yeah. going to get it all done. There's time. And I think. I agree. That's a great visual. Um, I can see it. I can feel it. And I think it's important too, to know that the yin earth is movable like the sand. It's Mm -hmm. blowing, it's shifting. The yin earth is really flexible and can change. So we have to prepare ourselves this month for things. We may get things in order, but they may not stay that way. Or we may, you know, organize a picnic with some friends, but it might rain. And it mm-hmm. gets rescheduled. The, the, it's about shifting and adjusting and pivoting and re reorganizing our thoughts and our plans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when we say sheep and goat, those are kind of interchangeable in the Chinese mm-hmm. astrology. Um, yeah. The sheep is going to be a more feminine, passive animal, where the goat is more of a risk taker, more adventurous, um, yang energy. And if you have a sheep or a goat in your chart, it's it really is going to depend on the influence of the energy, the flying stars, or the annual energy around you, as well as the other animals in your chart in the elements. Yes. So the sheep doesn't get along with everybody. You would think no. so, but they don't. No. And you and I are going to feel it, my friend. I know. I know. We've got that dog in our charts. Mm -hmm. So just a little bit of background, dog, dog, Jeremy and I have a dog in our day pillar. The day we were born was ruled by the dog Mm -hmm. and the day pillar represents our physical body, our health, our energy level Mm -hmm. and the sheep and dog don't play well together. The dog is going to want to round up, herd the sheep but it may not go in our favor because we're getting a double whammy, <laughs> aren't we? Yeah. Well, the dog, I, it's like being at a, at a, at a farm and the dog is like barking at the sheep and the sheep is like, what? I'm just right here. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> that's so funny. Cause my son's cat, she's just filled with anxiety right now. And that's what she's doing to me. She's like, She's a black and white. She's like this border collie and she's chasing me around the house, trying to get me to go to his bedroom door to open the door for her to go in, but he's sleeping in there and she's just meowing at me loudly. (laughs) So the dog is also an earth animal, but it's a young earth animal and it Mm -hmm. likes stability. It likes when things aren't shifting and changing. But I like to sit here and watch TV at this time. So I think we're going to see some misunderstandings. Mm -hmm. There's a breakup energy. Um, Mm -hmm. The breakup energy for you and I, because it's in the day pillar, is our spousal relationship. Mm -hmm. So it's about giving space between us and our spouse. Don't force things. Um, put things off till next month. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's a penalty, right? Yeah, with, with well, we've got the penalty in two with two animals. So mm-hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. it is. That and the penalty, penalty is. Go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> well, I feel like the penalty is is really about feeling pressure. It's like being forced up against the wall, like you said. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. it the tide the, the wheels are um the game is shifting on the dog. Mm -hmm. Um and so we're gonna feel like we've got the our back up against the wall. And then what happens when you back somebody up against the wall? They get defensive. They you do. Know, you know, they come out barking and attacking. So we're gonna us dog folks, no really matter where it is in your chart, that's gonna show up in some of your relationships. So catch that. Yeah. Know that mm -hmm. that's what that is so that you're not getting into a fight that really doesn't need to happen. Yes. Do you want to talk about the clash or the Yeah, the let's talk about the, let's talk about the ox the you know the sheep is that really gentle animal, but it gets spooked too and so it likes to move forward. It likes to jump up. I don't know if you've ever seen baby goats, but they like to jump around and <laughs> they like to jump on everything and and explore. They're always looking for what, what's new, what's out there. Well, the ox is not like that. It's a very slow and steady animal. It likes a sure footing, right? Mm -hmm. And the image I always get is little baby goats jumping on top of this ox and the ox just lying there going, oh God, is this my life? Like, <laughs> when you've got this clash energy, you've got this disgruntled ox that's just like, I just want to be here in peace on my mm -hmm. own in a stable environment. And then you've got this happy little goat that's jumping all over the the poor little ox. So the energy I see here with that clash is it's important to be aware of, I think clashes bring awareness. They bring aware mm -hmm. of an awareness of the other. This is the difference mm -hmm. between me and you. And mm -hmm. so we have to kind of agree to disagree with this energy. So ox, make sure if you have an ox in your chart, make sure that this is a, a month that you lay low. This is going to be one of those months where you feel the baby goats jumping all over you. So take, take respite this month. See if yeah. you can, you know, uh, take a breather and find patience for the baby goat. Mm. Yeah. So it's good advice because it just feels irritating as hell to the, the ox. Right. And then to make to put icing on the cake, you're married to an ox. My husband has an ox in his chart. So if they're agitated by the goat, and yeah, we feel are. like we're up and against we the wall, agitated. and July has <laughs> always been one of those months that I'm like, I could do without this month. It, it's mm. just not one of my favorites. So I love that yeah. you said that because we should all take note of yeah. even if it's on your your work calendar, if it's in your diary, your journal take note, like reflect on June. How mm -hmm. was June for you? Because the energy will be a little bit different because it'll be a different year and the, the, the element that supports it might be different. But June yeah. is always the, the horse month. Excuse me, July is always the sheep month or the goat month. Yeah. So take note of how those, those energies feel so that you're preparing your schedule for that. It's like, well, maybe yeah. I don't want to see family. Maybe I don't want to override my schedule during that month. Yeah. Yeah. So many ways to use this information. I would love for you to share about the rat because you have a rat in your chart. I do have oh, a rat friend. in my chart. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? Oh. I'm sorry. Now, July, July has never been a happy, happy, exciting time for me. Um, well, this is damage energy, okay? And when you've got two zodiac animals that are in damage with each other, this can lend itself to, um, you know, accidents, misfortunes, and illness. So rats, this is a month to lay low. You know, the, the thing that I love about the rat is its defense mechanism is hiding. It, it likes the cover mm. of night. So find a nice place, a nice nook where you can be alone. And this you can really use this month as a strategy month because mm -hmm. the rat is all about strategy. Be to yourself, be more inward and create a strategy for the rest of the year. This is a really great pause in the middle of the year for rats. Mm -hmm. So use this mm -hmm. to your benefit. It doesn't have to be all doom and gloom. But um, yeah, that's kind of what I've looked at July as throughout my life is just, okay, what do I want the rest of the year to look like? 
I I love that you said something. Of, I think, well, whatever you said, it, it made me realize, you know, the, the rat lives in the north, which is water energy, and we're in the heat of mm-hmm. freaking summer right now. <laughs> so no wonder the rat wants to, like, go into the dark places underground. Like, yeah. don't disturb me right now. Whatever is happening out there is too volatile. It's too hot. It's too temperamental. Mm-hmm. And I don't want, I, I'm not up to being a part of it. So that's, that's great insights. <clears throat> Anything else about the Chinese stuff? Everybody no. else has got a, a decent, a, a positive relationship yeah. or a neutral positive relationship that. Yeah, with, with the yeah. sheep. But I Which think overall great. the sheep is here to teach us to consider others, mm-hmm. be compassionate. It's governed by the sacral chakra, that energy, the yin earth energy. Um, it's a very mothering energy. It's the most feminine mm-hmm. energy of the zodiac yeah. wheel. So maybe, you know, connect with feminine energy more, um, take mm-hmm. care of yourself, do self care. Um, even if you're a man, you know, go get a yeah. pedicure, go do something yeah. kind of fun. Okay. What about exactly. the Western world? Well, I love, I love talking about the divine feminine within the sheep energy because we're in cancer season and cancer is ruled by the moon, which is very divine feminine. It's the nurturer, the mother. So this is a really beautiful energy that, that kind of combines the worlds of Western and Eastern astrology, uh, astrology. Um, in, in the beginning of the month of July 5th, well, leading up to July 5th, July 4th, we have a really beautiful new moon in Cancer. And Cancer, again, is home, family, nurturing. So if you're planning on seeing um, friends or family for this holiday, it's it's going to be a really nice, positive energy. There's no negative aspects that are hitting the moon and the sun in this in this beautiful conjunction of the sun and moon. New moons means new energy, new chapters. So if there's some new things that you want to start trying for maybe the 4th of July, if you're in the United States, um, if you want to do something new as a family, this is a great time to do that. Um, If there's any new house projects that you want to do, Cancer Rules Home, Family, and Real Estate. So Maybe possibly if you're wanting to put your house on the market, this is a really nice moon to do that under. It's really, really well aspected, meaning it's positive energy. Uh, The full moon in Capricorn on July 21st. This is full moon means letting go, let go of all negative aspects when it comes to Capricorn energy. This is government systems, um, patriarchal energies, um, this is uh, business industry. So anything that's holding you back from business or believing in your business or um, taking that step into your business, this is going to be a really great full moon to let go of any negative self-talk when it comes to business. Um, and if you don't have a business, this is just your general um, path in life. Where are you moving forward to? What is it? What is your purpose? What are you? What are you doing to fulfill that purpose? This is great energy to connect to letting go of any negative self-talk there. Um, Mercury, the planet of good fortune, or excuse me, Mercury is the planet of communication and the mind, how our minds think, and it's moving into the sign of Leo now, and that's the first week in July. Now, Leo is the sign of the lion, and it's also known as the drama queen of the zodiac. It likes to be in the center stage. It likes to have attention and all eyes on them. But Mercury, it likes the sign of Aquarius, which is the opposite sign. It, they call that when it's in its it when it's in its higher power, they call it exaltation. Well, Mercury in Leo is in fall, meaning it's in its lowest lowest amount of energy. It feels the least amount of energy there. It's like the image that I get in my mind of that is it's like, I would rather be home, but I have to go to the dentist today. I've got a dentist appointment. And you're lying in that chair and you're waiting for the, you know, the hygienist to come in and scrape your teeth. It's that kind of energy. So Leo in the negative, it wants all eyes on it and it's extremely selfish. So when we're talking Mercury, which is communication, meaning listening and speaking and also mindset, this is going to be a month of look at me, look at me, look at me, listen to me. So 
okay, that's going to spook that little sheep, right? <laughs> it's really going to spook the little sheep. So we have to be really careful and practice practice active listening this month. This is going to be a month where we need to listen to each other, to really hear each other out so that we're not spooking each other and that we're finding the compassion and that nurturing energy of cancer and also that sheep energy to really kind of ground us and pull us together with that really nice earth energy that the sheep possesses. So um, listening to each other is going to be really, really important. Now, We've got a major conjunction happening this month as well. Um, between July 11th and July 16th, two planets are going to be in alignment in the sky. And those are Mars, the planet of forward movement and physical action and desire, and Uranus, which is the planet of expecting the unexpected. They're both wow. in the sign of Taurus, which rules personal values and money. So when we have unexpected activity and Mars energy, which is action. This is very unexpected energy. So the week between the 11th and the 16th, there might be some really unexpected things as a collective that we weren't anticipating, um, particularly mm -hmm. to do with value systems. And right now we're in the United States of America, we're in a political cycle right now, and everyone's values are extremely divided. And I think that we can thank the dragon for that because the dragon is a very divisive energy. <laughs> we're halfway through the year. How's everyone doing with this division energy, right? Yeah. So that's going to intensify this month. There's gonna be a lot of unexpected twists and turns the first couple of weeks of um, July because of that. So again, mm -hmm. really know that it's important to connect with your people, connect with your friends, connect with family, family members, and practice active listening because we're going to need each other this month. Mm. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What a month. I <laughs> love the active listening. We just, oh, I want everyone to hear that. <laughs> That's a great, great insights and suggestions. Um, is there a specific, um, like, because it's the new moon in cancer, would there be mm -hmm. a, like a specific little ritual or um, way to set out your intentions or your prayers? I like to, I like to connect with the cancer energy, but then I also like to do something really fun. I like to find the degree. So in, in this, in this, um, aspect here, we're talking about cancer, the, the, uh, new moon in cancer is going to be at 14 degrees. So I like to look at my natal chart and find 14 degrees to see which area of life it's lighting up mm. and set intentions, not only around the themes of cancer, which is mothering, nurturing, nurturing my inner child, um, uh, connecting with uh, friends, family, all of those really nice energies, but then adding that extra layer of finding out which house it's in so I can focus on that area of my life. Mm, and then that. writing down intentions to really kind of um, see what I can do to start a new chapter in that area. Oh, I love this. I'm going to do that for sure. Um are you going to pull a card for us today? I sure am. I've got them right here. Oh, we've got a flyer. Okay. Interesting. Okay. This is the night of air and the night of air is all about quick action. Okay. Things occurring at great speeds. Okay. We're having to find creative solutions. So remember that Uranus Mars conjunction is going to produce a lot of unexpected activity. So we're going to have to think on our feet and that you remember that little sheep gets a little bit spooked and it wants to bolt or it freezes and falls over. So it's okay to ask for help this month. It's okay mm -hmm. to take your time. Like if there's any major decisions that you need to make, it's okay to tell the people that are involved with asking you to make that decision. I'd like to sleep on it. Mm. I'd like to take 24 hours for myself to sleep on it and be with that question before I make a decision. It's mm. always okay. Even if there's dire straits that are 
you know, it's all hinging on this decision. Take, take the night to sleep on it. And even though we might not all have a sheep in our chart, I think on just to, you know, add to what you're saying, we all have a part of us that is sensitive, that does mm -hmm. kind of freak out it in the moment, comfort that part of you. Yes. You know, do what the mother would do. You know, if, if mm -hmm. you had the perfect ideal mother or you were the perfect ideal mother energy, how would you comfort a child and yeah. to make them feel safe? Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Great conversation. Thank you so much, friend. I love that we Thank get to you. do this once a month. Um, yes. So if you're watching this on, mm -hmm. you know, in our emails or you're on the, the Via Feng Shui or the Tina Falk YouTube channel, we mm -hmm. have more of these kinds of conversations um, in our Everything Energy with Tina and Jeremy podcast. And we're yes. going to put a link down below. You can watch us and listen to us on Spotify. On Spotify, it is a video as well. So you can mm -hmm. watch us there. You can watch us also on our YouTube channel to keep the yep. conversations going. Yes, they're yeah. fun conversations. They are. I think it's interesting to track the energies in the skies to really mm. kind of see how it's going to be affecting us each month. Well, just the other day, you really helped us out because my granddaughter, who's almost one, was all of us. She's so she lives in such a not overly structured, but a very um, consistent home. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, she's just not herself. Even during the day, she wasn't sleeping. She wanted to be held. She woke up several times at night. There was, you know, one chunk where she, you know, took her two and a half hours to go back to sleep in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my first go-to is their full moon energy. What's happening mm -hmm. with the moon? And there wasn't anything like that. And we reached out to you and you mm -hmm. gave us a, 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 gave us, and we've talked about this before, but you gave us insights that told us that, okay, this is just a phase because my daughter mm -hmm. is like in her head, restructuring her whole system of parenting. And now how's she going to put her down? Do I go yeah. to a, you know, do I feed her before? Do I wait? Should I cut the nap back? She's trying to redo everything in her mind. And I'm just trying to say, don't go there yet. This is mm -hmm. just a, just a phase she's going through Yeah, and you nailed it. Yeah. And it was Mars. Mars is the planet of, if we take a look at the planet Mars in the tarot card deck, it's the tower card. It's that mm. bolt of lightning that's hitting the tower and kind of crumbling it to the ground. So it's those tower moments that kind of come in, swoop in, shift things a little bit, and then they move out. That's mm. the great thing about Mars is it moves quickly through the chart. And it was just sitting right on top of one of her planets, stirring things up, making her feel a little bit anxious, a little bit cranky. And then it passed and she started mm -hmm. to feel better. Yeah. She's back to herself. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad that Evan didn't change all of the things in her daily schedule. <laughs> well, that's what we do as parents or that's what we do yeah. as adults. It's like, oh, this isn't working shit. Now I got to figure out a new way to do it. And sometimes mm -hmm. it is just step back, observe, let it pass. What did you learn from that? then yeah. decide to make the pivot. Don't make the pivot in the midst of it. Yes. Just allow it to, to go. Oh, it was such a great learning opportunity. So thank you. And thanks You're everybody welcome. for being here. Yeah, thank you. We'll see you next month. Okay. There's links below if you want to schedule a reading with it, either yeah. one of us. We're, we're ready and open. So we, contact us. Yeah, this is a fun time to do it. Yeah, it is. Okay. See you later. Bye.